All right, class, welcome back to the Reebok Pump Fantasy Draft Camp. Today we are talking about fantasy rookies. Rookies are exciting because we don't know what they're gonna do. They're unknown quantities. And you know what? What are you gonna do? Do you wanna draft Chris Johnson again or do you want the mystery box? Ooh, take the mystery box, pick the box! Yeah, I don't blame you, but you gotta be careful with that mystery box. For every Doug Martin, there's a Ryan Matthews or a Bishop Sankey. For every Mike Evans, there's a Michael Crabtree. For every Cam Newton, there's a Johnny Manziel. So let's break things down by position. First up, running backs. If you don't watch a ton of college football, it's hard to know which running backs are gonna succeed at the next level. So what you do is look at the signposts for success. Number one, does that running back have a competent quarterback? Is his offensive line any good? A competent offense is the rising tide that raises all ships here. And perhaps most importantly, who else is on the depth chart? Is this guy gonna be the number one back? Is he going to be giving up reps just because he can't pass protect? A running back who only gets four touches is useless to you. Thanks a lot, Carlos Hyde. So who do I like this year? Number one, Melvin Gordon, San Diego. He's got that capable quarterback in Phillip Rivers, got a quality offensive line, got some decent coaching, and there's nobody getting in the way of his touches. He's gonna be like Jamal Charles, only without the sexy pass catching on the side. And of course, there's Todd Gurley. He's got the biggest talent, however, coming back from that ACL injury, he's not going to be starting. He's got that crappy offensive line and Trey Mason ahead of him on the depth chart while Mason's healthy. Still, if you've got that keeper league or that dynasty league, Gurley's going to pay off well for you. And the other name that I think is a must draft for you rookie lovers, Amir Abdul of the Lions. He's got that speed, the shiftiness, and Joyk Bell coming back from that Achilles injury is gonna create opportunities for him. Someone I'm not quite so big on, TJ Yeldon. Everything that people were saying about Toby Gerhardt this time last year, well, you know, the Lions crappy, but he's gonna get touches is being said about TJ Yeldon this year, and there's also the little matter of Denard Robinson being in the way. Be careful with that one. And in the later rounds, or if you've got an auction draft for the right price, yeah, sure, Duke Johnson, David Johnson, David Cobb, Tevin Coleman, these are all guys who have great upside because you don't know what they're capable of, but I'm not gonna try to sell you on them today. Let's talk wide receivers. The worst thing you can do as a fantasy owner is take one of last year's biggest trends and assume it's just gonna carry over into this year. For example, wide receiver is a notoriously difficult position that takes a year or two years to get adjusted to when you move from college to the pros. And yet, last year, because of Odell Beckham, because of Mike Evans, because of Kelvin Benjamin, the greatest crop of rookie wide receivers ever, people are thinking that might be the case again this year. No, it's not, unless, unless, you get my top rookie wide receiver this year, Amari Cooper. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey, I don't want an Oakland Raider on my fantasy team, and yeah, that's usually the right thing to say. However, Cooper is the most pro-ready of this year's class. He's smooth, he runs great routes, He's fast, he's got good hands. He's gonna be an instantaneous number one wide receiver on his team. I also like Nelson Aguilar of the Eagles. You can't go wrong being a wide receiver in a Chip Kelly offense. You will produce fantasy numbers. Outside of those two guys, there are a lot of high draft picks and high expectations for the rookie wide receivers, but I don't think you're gonna see the same production from last year. Devin Funchess, he's gonna be the number one wide out for the Carolina Panthers. Do not expect him to have the same output as Kelvin Benjamin last year. Other guys, Devontae Parker, Kevin White of the Bears, already both injured. White might miss the entire season. Philip Dorsett of the Colts, blazing speed and a crowded death chart. Going to be hard to get that many targets to be a useful fantasy piece in his rookie year. All right, that's not to say that there isn't value to be had in this crop of rookie wide receivers in the later rounds or at the right price. Take a look at Prashad Perryman of the Ravens. He's going to be stepping into Torrey Smith's deep catch and roll. Or Tyler Lockett of the Seahawks, going to be an instantaneous threat as a return man. Provides a lot of upside in the slot too. And on the Titans, Doriel Green Beckham is a big target. Maybe he finds that way to match up with his fellow rookie Marcus Mariota. Dollar in a dynasty league? Sure, why not? And finally, let's talk about quarterbacks. Hey, they're going to be out there making mistakes and they're going to be mostly playing for bad teams. 
Yeah. What about Andrew Luck, RG3, and Russell Wilson in 2012? They all went to the playoffs. Yes, they did. They also produced three of the top five fantasy years for rookie quarterbacks in history. Surely that's something that happens every single year. So, Marcus Mariota, Jameis Winston. Winston's got a better array of weapons around him, but he's gonna throw a lot more interceptions. Marcus Mariota doesn't quite have so much talent surrounding him. However, he's got speed. He's gonna get you those extra points on the ground. And that's why if I had to take a rookie quarterback, I'd probably go with Mariota. But I don't, so I won't, and you should neither. Yeah. Can you talk about rookie tight ends? Ugh, I'd rather not. If we learned anything from Eric Ebron and Austin Safarian Jenkins last year, it's that rookie tight ends are not worth drafting in your fantasy league. The best fantasy season from rookie tight end in history belongs to Rob Gronkowski. Know how many yards he had that season? 546. Yeah. Yeah, he also had like 10 touchdowns that season. Get out of my classroom. 